In this session, we look at the anatomy of a WordPress website. What I mean by that are the general areas that make up a website that is powered by WordPress. We're going to use three examples in this session, Social Media Power, Plum Web Solutions, and Deltina.com. Now, one thing that I typically do when I design a website using WordPress is I use a template that kind of depicts the general areas that I know I have to work with. I have a header area, a footer area, a main body area that has either my blog posts or my page content, and then I have a left sidebar and a right sidebar. And those will contain modules that will kind of make up the website but also be consistent on each of the pages. Now I can have different variations of these general areas like I can have a body area over here on the left, my sidebar is both to the right. I can only have one sidebar. Let me just look at a couple of other possibilities. Get in my main body area over here and kind of a, one sidebar that that stretches out over the rest of the the page and then two smaller sidebars underneath. Or I might choose a theme that has a main body area in the top and then has the, my sidebars actually underneath, so not on the side at all, they're underneath the main body area. And these are just some examples of the uh, types of configurations that you can, that you can make um, either yourself by customizing your themes or by, by choosing a theme that kind of fits the look and feel that you want from your site. So now let's look at some examples using some, some live uh, WordPress powered websites. First of all, let's look at the headers. The header is this area up here that is typically consistent throughout all of the pages of your website. And so this is the home page. If we click on another page, we'll see that the header remains the same, but the content actually changes or the page changes. Now a header can contain different features like search features in this case and custom headers or it can be as simple as just the title of your blog like this one shows and the description of your blog. This one also has a custom header. So as far as the navigation menu we have a lot of choices there as far as how to customize that. This has just a basic menu up here on the top and typically your navigation does show up just below your header here, but there are other options for placing your navigation, say, in, in your sidebars. And we also saw a way to create custom menus in a previous session. So if we look at the navigation menu here, this is, this is very different. It also has uh, drop-down features, which is really common. And then these are just uh, basic tabs. For navigation. So you have a lot of flexibility there. Now how your navigation is styled will depend a lot on your theme. I'm going to talk about anatomy first before I talk about themes. In the next section we actually talk about choosing your themes. Okay so moving on this is the the basic main content area of your site. Now I went back to the home page on this site because I wanted to show you that that by default this area, the main area of your site contains your recent blog posts. And you can customize this any number of ways. You can, de you can determine how many posts you have on the front page before people have to actually go to the next page. You can only show a little bit of a post and then have a read more uh, tab here like we saw in some of the previous sessions. So you have a lot of control as to how your blog posts actually show up on your front page. But the other thing about WordPress is that you don't have to only have your blog posts on your front page. You can also have what's called a static home page. And what that means is it looks like a regular website and that this is just the home page of your website and it has all of your whatever information you want to show on your home page, but you go to another tab to actually show your blog posts. And I'll also show you how to do that in a subsequent session. So on the Deltina.com site, 
Well, notice that this also has a static home page and that the blog is actually on a different tab, but it's not even called blog. You can give that page whatever name you want. I call it musings because on, on this particular blog, I only post poetry there. That's more of a personal blog than a professional blog. Okay, so now let's take a look at sidebars. The sidebars are one of the things that are, are really flexible in creating your WordPress website and it can offer you a way to, to really customize your site to your own needs. Now as we saw in our templates, we can have sidebars in a number of different locations. Again, that's going to depend on your theme. This, this social media power website here, I'm going to show you the areas that are actually make up the sidebars because this one is a little bit different than just your typical column like sidebars. This whole area right in here is a sidebar in and of itself. It's just one big sidebar, but it ends right here. And then we have two more sidebars, this sidebar here and this sidebar here. Now if we pop open our template, we can see that template here in, in a, with a little clearer where we have our header, our main body area, and that one wide sidebar area, and then two smaller sidebars underneath. If we take a look at the Plum Web Solutions site, however, we don't see any sidebars right away until we actually scroll down. And then we actually see three columns in what would be considered the footer area. So again, this is how the, it, creating sidebars for your theme really gives you a lot more flexibility than you would think. And then finally on the Deltina.com site we just have one main sidebar and it just goes all the way down the bottom. Now let's take a look at the footer area on, the, on our example sites. If we scroll down to the bottom on social media power we'll see that in this footer area we have copyright information and we also have a links to WordPress and to who, who the the person who created our theme you always want to make certain that you give credit where credit is due especially when you're using open source software never remove those credits and also in this footer we have a nice little menu that just kind of reiterates our main menu so people decide to scroll down they can also see our navigation. Again, if we go down to the bottom of Plum Social, its, it's footer is a little, a little different. It only has a copyright statement, but also it has another little area here where you can click to see the mobile version of that website. And then again, the Deltina is a very, a very basic footer. It always gives um, credit to WordPress and to whoever created the theme, but also this one has a couple added things where you can additionally subscribe to the RSS feed or the comments. So now I want to talk about sidebar widgets. This again is, is a way for you to really customize your site to your own needs. Now a widget, a, a sidebar widget is, is an element or a module that kind of makes up or builds your sidebars. And a lot of them already come stock in WordPress. And we'll discuss, we've discussed some of those in previous sessions and we'll continue to discuss uh, more of them later, especially how to create your, create your own text widgets. But for now, let's just take a look at these. We know that this is a widget right here that is in our, our kind of large sidebar on social media power. And what we have, we have a few uh, ways for people to subscribe to our blog on the top and then we have a banner ad so these are examples of things that you can put in your and very easily actually place in your sidebars and then here we have our other two sidebars in this site we have just a link to the social media tip of the day we have some social buttons here for people to find us on of the other places we are on the social web. We have another little button here for people to subscribe. We have a little icon for people to click on to find the book. And we have oh, another way for them to get our RSS feed as a nice stylish widget from Widget Box. And then here are some some what I consider kind of standard 
sidebar elements that, that automatically come with WordPress. For instance, categories. These are all the blog categories that you can click on and, and just get a list of all of the categories or all of the blogs that were listed under that category. And recent posts, so you can get a list of all of the recent posts for this blog. And then some other little custom widgets. And here's a search widget here. So that's to give you an idea of you know what we mean by by sidebar widgets and also kind of the variety of things that you can place on your sidebars. If we look over here at Plum Web Solutions, we really don't have any remember sidebars in the main area, but if we scroll down to the bottom, what we see are these would be considered the sidebar widgets or elements. And what these these really are their links. They're just collections of links. And so your sidebar widgets don't always have to be animated graphics. They don't always have to be graphics. They don't really always have to be blog related. But you still want to look at them as kind of individual modules that you can customize to your own needs. And then if we go over to Deltina.com, we'll see some pretty typical sidebar modules or sidebar widgets also, like a friend feed widget that we copied the code over and placed over onto our site. And we're going to have a, a la session later on to show you how to create those types of text widgets or custom widgets. You know, again, we have our favorite um, sharing and subscribing widgets from Add to Any. We have our Facebook page. And we have some Twitter widgets. And then also some, some links like we saw on the bottom of Plum Web Solutions. And this concludes our session on the anatomy of a WordPress website.